Anytime you talk about Google's Pixel devices for very long, you will inevitably begin getting comments about one specific thing, and that is thermals, the temperature that these devices run at. Now, while I must tell you, I've not really had any issues daily driving my Pixel Fold in regard to thermals. I've never had the device overheat, tell me it's too warm to do a particular task, have the camera shut down, whatever it might be. I've only ever experienced it feeling a little bit warm to my hand. I can use an application to check the battery temperature and maybe it's 38 Celsius, something in that range, but nothing actually happens with that temperature for me. However, I do fully acknowledge that other people have had issues where the device has gotten too warm. Devices like the Pixel Fold in particular have gotten too warm and maybe the camera shut down or something like that. This is a big problem and it's something that frustrates a lot of Pixel users. Whether or not it's something, a problem that has plagued me or not, I do fully recognize it's something that Google absolutely has to improve with their future Tensor processors. Of course, these processors are sort of designed, I guess, partially by Google, but then built by Samsung. Today, we have some new reports coming out that say that Tensor G3, which will be launching with the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro in October, early October, October the 4th, to be specific, apparently these processors are going to be using a new technique, a new wafer packaging technique called FOWLP, which stands for Fan Out Wafer Level Packaging. And apparently this technique, this technology, however you want to describe it, is going to be able to reduce some of those thermals, bring those temperatures down. Now look, I'm not some processor experts. I'm not going to sit here and you know, try to break down what exactly this means, but the reporting is this does help keep processors cooler than if you were not using this technology. Now, this is not a new technology, okay? Qualcomm, MediaTek, other brands, other makers have been using this exact type of thing for some time now with some success. However, Samsung does not use this when they're making Google's Tensor chips. So they're going to be using it with the G3 and hopefully this will help bring down those temperatures. Now the big problem here is that a lot of people feel like, yes, Tensor gets hot for sure, but a lot of people feel like the modem is just as big a problem when it comes to thermals as the processor itself. Perhaps one of the big reasons I don't see any issues with thermals is because from the very beginning, I disabled 5G on my Pixel Fold. There are several reasons. One, everywhere I go around Knoxville, the 5G speed and the LTE speeds are effectively about the same. And number two, the LTE is always fast enough to do what I needed to do. For me, anything over like one or two megabits is fast enough to do whatever I want to do. So if the 5G is 20, I don't really care because one or two was still fast enough. So I'm giving up battery to run 5G and the device was getting warmer while running 5G. So I'm going to do that for no benefit. doesn't really make sense. So I disable it. So perhaps that's part of the reason my device doesn't really have any of these issues other people have talked about. So again, the processor does get warm, but a lot of us feel like the modem is just as big a problem as anything. So it's hard for me to look at this and get particularly excited or to tell you that the Pixel 8 is not going to have any of these overheating issues that the Pixel 7, the Pixel 6, and the Pixel Fold, all of these Tensor-led devices have experienced because it is apparently using the same modem as before. Now, of course, there are plenty of other reasons, though, to get excited about the Pixel 8 and the Tensor G3. I put together this handy table some time ago, and you can see the Tensor, the G2, and then the G3, compared to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 in this instance, although there are newer things coming down the line all the time. The G3 is going to be a pretty radical improvement over the G2 in terms of raw horsepower. We are switching to much, much newer cores from the X1 to the X3, the A78 to the A715, and they're basically changing the architecture quite a bit as well. This should be a much, much faster processor than we have with the G2, which to be honest, using my Pixel Fold and again, the Pixel 7 Pro, I never really had any problems with the overall speed of that device. Launching applications, doing whatever I wanted to do is very, very smooth. It's a well-optimized device. But again, Pixel 8 with the G3 should be considerably faster, although 
If some of the early leaked benchmarks are any indication, they are still going to fall short of the newer Qualcomm chips in terms of that raw horsepower number. To hammer that point home even further, optimization is what really matters to me. All of these phones are preposterously fast these days. It comes down to the software that they're running and how they're optimized. And again, Google has done a good job with that with their pixels, at least in my experience, but still reason to be excited there. Even if maybe we need to you know, see these headlines about, oh, the G3 is gonna fix the thermal problems. Maybe let's pump the brakes a little bit because I don't know that that's necessarily going to be true. When it comes to devices like this, that are very, very thin, almost any processor you put in it is going to be warm. My Z Fold devices, my Z Fold 4, would often get just as hot in my hand as my Pixel Fold. My wife's Z Flip would get just as hot as the Pixel Fold. When you're very thin, you're going to get warm. With the Pixel 8, what we really need to hear is they've done more to actually mitigate the temperature as well. We need to hear about the cooling mechanisms in that device. And with the Pixel Fold 2, we're going to need to hear similar things as well for me to really start, you know, sounding from the mountaintops that the thermal problems are being truly, truly addressed. Guys, that's pretty much all I've got for you on this one. Sound off in those comments down below. Have you seen these thermal issues? What's going on with your device? Let me know. Subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.